So I wanted to ask you a bit about, you have an interesting backstory on how you got into this whole light and circadian rhythm and leptin mm -hmm. and all of that. And your Instagram, I've watched it morph and change a bit over the years. So how did that transition happen? Yeah. Um, well, long story short, in 2019, I was dealing with a lot of digestive issues and just like skin issues and bloating. And I was just convinced my life, you know, everything was falling apart. So a friend of mine who's a functional medicine doctor said, why don't you try this carnivore diet thing I'm doing? I could run all your labs. We could go, but I think a lot of what you're dealing with could be fixed with a carnivore diet. And I was like, this woman's effing insane. Like, why would I ever do a stupid diet like that? But I was at this point of just kind of desperation. I was teaching yoga full-time. So I was a full-time yoga teacher had been for 12 years. And I said, you know what, what do I have to lose? I can't, I'm having trouble like practicing yoga. Cause my joint, my joints hurt so bad. I'm bloated all the time. I'm showing up to teach looking five months pregnant. So I jumped on, I did a carnivore diet and I, within just a couple of weeks, a lot of those issues were gone. Um, and so as a joke, I started an Instagram page just to kind of keep myself motivated. Cause I didn't really know anybody else doing the carnivore diet, like anywhere, especially being a yoga teacher where everyone's vegan or vegetarian. And so I started this page called the carnivore yogi or carnivore yogi as a joke. And it kind of just like went viral. <laughs> it was like very quickly got 10,000 followers. People were just like, who is this woman who teaches yoga and she's doing the carnivore diet? And <laughs> right. So, it doesn't go together. Like I see it's the not. It's very polarizing. <laughs> like, you know me offline. Like, I don't really love to be like a polar. I'm a nice person. I don't love to be polarizing. And so um, that was kind of always like a conflict. And then after about, I would say a year or so of doing carnivore, I started running into some issues with it. I don't think anyone needs to do those diets long term. But I started having some hormonal issues, thyroid issues. And then I decided I wanted to try to get pregnant, you know, because it's what everyone does when they're in their 40s. <laughs> so like, I remember that I was like, she's getting pregnant. That's bold. <laughs> not easy. So I, it's not easy. And you know, the carnivore diet was not helping me with fertility, even mm -hmm. though I know there are some doctors out there that say it is the diet for fertility. I strongly disagree. My hormones were low. Thyroid was not happy, had gained weight. Like what seemed like out of nowhere was doing it carnivore fasting, electrolyte, you know, all the things I was trying it every which way. Oh, and I had this YouTube channel where I was, so you can go and watch the downfall of carnivore yogi kind of like, I haven't deleted all those videos, but it's like, now I'm counting my macros and here's why. And here's a day in my life of counting macros. And here's a day in my life, of high fat carnivore. Here's a day in my life of fasting. Here's a day in my life of not fast. Just like I, I shouldn't need to like delete those videos, but anyway, was not working, started trying to get pregnant, didn't tell anyone, started having miscarriages, which are, they Aww. suck. Like having miscarriages, I would hear other people have that happen to them. And I'm like, oh, that's really sad. But like going through it yourself, it's like, man, it's really hard. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to just try IVF. I have a daughter who is 16 with non speaking autism. And so a lot of people are like, why'd you wait? you know, until you're 41, 40 to start having a baby while well, very challenging child. And we kept thinking it's going to get easier. It's going to get easier. And it never got easier. It got a little bit, it, we had a little bit of a better time, which is why we we're like, okay, let's do this. Didn't know it was going to take us two years. So we did the IVF thing, which I don't recommend, highly do not recommend. And in, when I was in the middle of IVF, I had my own podcast. It was the carnivore yogi podcast at the time. And I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Jack Cruz and he basically, and I was everyone I was interviewing at that point, as soon as the camera was off, record was off. I was like picking their brain about fertility, about, you know, everything that's <laughs> to everyone I was interviewing. I'm like, okay, so what do you know about pregnancy after 40 and da, da, da. and everyone was really kind. Everyone was really nice. This particular carnivore doctor, who's also a fertility doctor to gave me his phone number. I mean, there's so many amazing, nice people that I have met in this journey, but Cruz was the first person who was like, you need to study light. You need to study leptin. You need to, he's like carnivore diet is not something you need to be doing year round. Like he kind of just set me straight, but he basically told me the story of light and how this impacts our hormones and how this impacts 
our thyroid. And I, it kind of made me think like, holy crap, I've been so obsessed with food. Like I did vegan, I've done vegetarian, I've tried every diet that there is AIP, paleo, um, mm -hmm. cabbage, like forget it. I've done it all. And that was always the focus of like, I'm going to heal myself with food. And that's how, trust me, I still think it's important, but he was kind of the first one who got me thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm missing this whole other piece here. And so this is what I do. I dive in <laughs> like, I got to know everything about this. I got to study all about this. You know, reading Jack's blogs can be like, oh, like you need a freaking medical degree to get through some of his blogs. But I did. I oh, I have a medical degree and it's still daunting. <laughs> 